So it'd be nice to adjust exposures in one half EV increments with my Mint uh, SLR 670S camera. Unfortunately, the camera can only make full shutter speed adjustments one EV at a time. So there's no real ability to select in between speeds. And while most manually controlled cameras allow f-stops to be set in half or a third stop increments, the original SX70 camera that Mint refurbishes has a fixed f8 aperture, more or less fixed f8 aperture. In other words, there's no control over the aperture at all. Now, all, all too often, I'll take a meter reading only to find that the really the best exposure lies between two shutter speeds. For example, it could lie between 1 25th and 1 250th of a second at f8. And because I can't change the aperture, I'm forced to choose either the lower shutter speed, which will result in a slight overexposure, or the higher shutter speed, which is might result in a darker picture than I really wanted. Now, because I'm shooting at Polaroid SX70 Integral Film, which has a really limited latitude, especially in the highlights, these really seemingly minor uh, compromises in exposure can have a fairly major impact on the quality of the final photograph. However, not everything is lost. Uh, I have sort of been working on a workaround that will allow uh, minus one-half EV settings. A quick side about EVs since I'll be using the term quite a lot in what follows. Now an EV is the acronym for exposure value and it's a neutral term that describes one full f-stop difference or one full shutter speed difference. For example EV plus one describes changing an aperture setting from say f8 to f5.6 or the shutter speed setting from 1 500th of a second to 1 250th of a second. Either of these would achieve an EV plus one exposure change. What I do is I mount a cheap uh, variable neutral density filter or VND filter over the lens and I preset it to minus one and one half EV. Then I s set the shutter speed on the camera to minus one EV and the net result is that I will have a minus one half EV exposure change. So for example, if the desired shutter speed uh, lies between 1 25th and 1 250th of a second at f8, uh, the camera would force me to choose one or the other with the result being either a lighter or darker picture than I pre-visualized. With a VND filter set at 1 half EV and placed over the camera lens and then using a 1 60th of a second shutter speed, then I get the exposure I want. Let's call it 1 25th and a half second at f8. So to do this, the VND filter needs to be calibrated and mounted over the camera lens, and here's how I do it. First, of course, you're going to need an SX70 camera that allows manual exposure control of some sort, such as the Mint SLR 670S. Now, this uh, modified vintage uh, SX70 folding camera and its attached time machine uh, allows me to have control over the shutter speeds. Now you're also going to need a custom filter holder to hold the VND filter over the camera lens. What I recommend is the retrograde, retrograde engineering SX37 filter lens adapter, quite a mouthful. It's basically a very simple 3D printed plastic clip uh, with a metal 37 millimeter filter holder attached to it. So what you do is you just slip it over the edge right here and you can see that the filter holder itself is right over the top of the camera lens. Now this is a pretty simple piece of kit but it's so useful that I really think it should be uh, in, it, in the camera bag of anybody using a folding Polaroid SX70 camera. So I can attach 37 millimeter filters uh, directly to the filter mount, but there is a much wider range of 40.5 millimeter filters, filters out there. So what I do is I use a 37 to 45 millimeter step up ring and that just screws in nicely into the front of the filter there. So what you should note is that filters larger than 40.5 millimeter are likely to inf uh, interfere with the hinged flap on the folding camera. Uh, this means, for example, that the popular 49 millimeter filters are going to be 
way too large and are going to press down too much on this camera flap if they will fit on at all. There are a number of 40.5 millimeter variable neutral density filters available. What I use is an inexpensive Vivitar 40.5 millimeter variable NDX filter with an advertised 1 to 10 f-stop re uh, reduction range. For the time being you're not going to need the camera, that's strictly for taking the pictures, but you will need the, f the filter holder, the step-up ring, and of course your variable ND filter. Um, and you're also going to need a light table and all this is so that you can calibrate your your variable neutral density filter Now I'm using here a uh, autograph light uh, pad that I happen to have kicking around uh, if you don't have one of these then Maybe try to find a piece of translucent white plastic and place a light underneath it so you could light it from below create your own sort of uh, temporary uh, light table so what I do is I place the filter on the light table and outline the area with masking tape. And what this does is it helps me define a specific area that helps ensure that I will be getting consistent light readings. So what I do is I start by taking a light meter reading of the masked off area. Uh, you can use a spot meter, or you probably should use a spot meter such as the Pentax Spot Meter 5 or a spot meter app on your iPhone. Uh, and this is so you'll get a good reading inside the fairly tight 40.5 uh, millimeter circle that you've outlined. So the free Lumu light meter app uh, works pretty well for this particular project, for this purpose, because it allows precise EV readings. Now what you want to do to set it up, first of all, you can just ignore all the usual meter settings that we have here, the, the aperture, the shutter speed, and the film speed. They don't really matter. All you're really after is this EV reading that we see at the top. And to set it up, what you want to do is, first of all, hit the gear icon, go to general settings, and then make sure you select continu continuous measuring, such I have, as I have here. Then go back and click on the spot metering, and this is your spot metering setup, and hit the little filtering area which is right up here and then scroll down and make sure that you have the show EV setting checked as I have here and then just go back to your spot meter setting make sure that you're reading inside of the square right here and what you do is you take a note of your EV reading uh, because you're going to use that for the reference for all of your other meter, meter readings. So now you need to mount the VND filter on the SX37 uh, filter lens adapter and then once you've done that then you want to attach it just so it doesn't move around while you're manipulating this for your calibration just use some masking tape just to tape it down to your to your light table again just so it doesn't move around and it sort of centers your filter over top of that area that you've outlined on your light table so all VND filters come with an uncalibrated scale and the Vivitar filter is certainly no different uh, there's no spe specified one-stop or two-stop markings, just a series of dots or dashes along the edge of the, uh, engraved along the edge of the filter. So what we have to do is we have to calibrate the filter. We start doing that by carefully attaching a thin strip of masking tape over the filter's scale, such as it is, on the rotating ring of the filter. Now it's easier to do this while the filter and the camera mount is taped to the light table, so I I attach my one half inch masking tape over the ring, stretching from the maximum to the minimum marks on the filter, and the actual words and symbols used are going to vary depending on the filter you're, you are using. And then what I do with a sharp knife is I just run it along the edge of the filter, using the edge of the filter as a guide, just to trim off the tape so I get a nice neat edge. So next what I do is I take a meter reading while slowly rotating the filter ring. And what I want to do then is get a reading, an EV reading, 
right here that is 1.5 EV lower than the bare light table reading. And once I've, you can see it gets darker and lighter, once I get a minus one half EV reading established, then I carefully, without accidentally rotating the filter ring, mark that point uh, on the masking tape of the filter using a fine tip permanent marker. Now on my Vivitar VND filter, there's a small triangle imprinted on the filter's fixed ring and the 1.5 mark should be exactly under that triangle. Now I like to mark each point with a red permanent marker and then after all the points are marked, then annotate each point, uh, 1.5, 2, 2.5 and 3 with a very fine black marker. So now what I do is I locate the minus 2 EV location using exactly the same approach. I uh, using my spot meter, find a um, uh, find the location that is minus 2 EV uh, compared to the bare light table reading. And then I would mark this point on the filter. Then I would like locate the darker minus 2.5 EV and the minus 3 EV settings on the filter as well and mark these as well. Now I just note that my my Vivitar filter manages a maximum of five and a half stop range, which is pretty far far short from the advertised ten stop range, and I certainly couldn't eco out a minus one EV setting. Now, perhaps other filters, or perhaps a more expensive VND filter, and you can spend a lot of money on VND filters, um, such as the forty point five millimeter. B and W SX Pro Digital ND Vario filter. <laughs> that kind of filter might do better. Uh, if you do happen to find a filter where, especially if you can get a minus one EV reading uh, on it, uh, then by all means let everybody know. You can put it in the comments below, and uh, that would be certainly helpful to know. In the meantime, I'm just going to stick with my. Uh, Vivitar filter. Uh, it's a cheap $20 filter and it suits me fine. So anyways, that's it. Uh, now you can go off and take some pictures with your calibrated filter at half EV settings. So here's how it works in practice. First of all, take a meter reading of a subject and if that ideal exposure happens to lie between shutter speeds, let's say between 1 250th of a second and 1 five hundredth of a second for this example, then what I would do is I would attach the 37X filter holder and mount my calibrated VND filter, which I've already done here, and I'd mount it to the camera. Then I would set my VND filter to its minus 1.5 setting, so in other words the 1.5 red dot would go across from the triangle on my on my uh, Vivitar filter. Then I would take a, a note of the slower of the two shutter speeds uh, that are bracketing my ideal exposure and then I would set the shutter speed on my camera to an additional shutter speed slower. So for example, in this case the slower of the two shutter speeds is 1 250th of a second. So I, what I would do is I would set the camera shutter speed then to 1 25th of a second and that would then give me a, a, a net minus one half EV exposure with both the VND filter and the shutter speed setting. So if you wanted to take a bracketed set of photos, uh, then what I would do is set the VND filter to its two setting and then take a second photo and that would be my minus one half EV picture and then I would remove the filter and filter holder entirely and then set the shutter speed to the slower shutter speed of my bracketed shutter speed. So that would be 1 one twenty-fifth of a second in this example. And then I would take a third photo, which would be my plus one half EV photo. So I'd have one, my first one would be at my ideal exposure. The second one would be a slightly darker at minus one half EV. And the third one would be slightly, slightly lighter at plus one half EV. Lastly, to avoid damaging your camera, what you want to do is remove the filter holder before you fold it up. So here's two uh, quick examples of the VND filter in action. Now, 
This interior photo was taken in a contrasty window silk location with a bit of fill light. Now in this case the first exposure taken at 1 2 50th of a second was pretty much exactly what I wanted. Now the second photo taken at 1 500th of a second which is minus 1 EV was way too dark. And a third photo taken with my VND filter set to the 1.5 EV setting at 1 25th of a second sort of straddles the, the two. Now laying out all three of the photos side by side shows that the VND filter is giving me a credible one half EV exposure difference. And although I still prefer my first exposure, the minus one half EV is taken with my VND filter is certainly a viable alternative. Certainly more viable than the minus one EV exposure. So it works quite well with that, again, with the limited latitude of the Polaroid uh, integral film. Now, my exposure readings for this lake scene suggested an ideal exposure straddling 1 2 50th and 1 500th of a second. Now, using my VND filter set to the 1.5 setting and a 1 25th of a second shutter speed, I was able to achieve pretty much my ideal exposure. Now as a backup I took a second shot with my VND filter set to 2 uh, again using the same shutter speed. Now I prefer my first meter exposure at 1.5 EV but this, certainly the second one which is a 1 half EV less exposure was also still a viable exposure at least so at least I have two good options to choose from. Polaroid integral film is certainly a finicky material and getting the correct exposure, the exposure you envisioned, is always going to be a challenge. Your tones can easily slip in and out of range, your highlights can go from washed out to a dull grey with, within a, just a one stop range and once the photo is ejected really there's no means to massage the results. So fine tuning your exposure with a calibrated VND filter certainly increases your chances of walking away with a good looking uh, photo. So I hope you find this helpful. Uh, please let me know in the comments below one way or the other. Uh, you'll also find a resource list down there uh, for the equipment that I used. And finally, you'll find a hard copy version of this topic on my blog at walkclickmake.com right here. In the meantime, take a walk, click that shutter, and make some Polaroid art. See you next time.